नमस्ते नमस्ते शिमला दीदी नमस्ते एवरीवन गुड मॉर्निंग एंड वेलकम टू द मॉर्निंग सेशन जी नमस्ते सुनील कुमार जी सभी को नमस्ते गुड मॉर्निंग एंड वेलकम वी आर डूइंग यू एच वी थ्री इन द मॉर्निंग सेशन एंड वी आर इन द लास्ट मॉड्यूल वी वी टॉकिंग अबाउट द साइंस ऑफ वर्क एंड पार्टिसिपेशन इन द लार्जर ऑर्डर इन लेक्चर ट्वेंटी फाइव वी टॉक अबाउट द साइंस ऑफ वर्क साइंस ऑफ बिहेवियर फर्स्ट नाउ वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट साइंस ऑफ वर्क एंड पार्टिसिपेशन इन द लार्जर ऑर्डर सो वी सेट दैट वी वी एस्पायर फॉर कंटिन्यूस हैप्पीनेस and for that we need to have right understanding and right feeling right understanding we were able to see as looking at the reality the way it is seeing the reality the way it is when we do that then we have the wisdom to be able to identify our goal and with that identification of the goal then we set about seeing how to fulfill that goal so this how to do it part that is the science and in that science of how to go about fulfilling this goal we spoke of the science of behavior that means our interaction with other people other human beings in human human relationships and how we can check if we are doing justice in our relationships if we are doing justice in our relationships there will be mutual happiness happiness for me as well as happiness for the other if we are not then we need to ensure our feeling from our side and if i can see if i can refer to my natural acceptance i will see that the others misbehavior or lack of the behavior that i feel they should have is only because of lack of competence not that they have a different intention from mine because when i can see my natural acceptance i can also see that this natural acceptance is there in everybody so each and every one has the same natural acceptance each and every one has the same pure intention similar to mine so if it is only a lack of competence in the other then i can take part see my role and ensure my feeling from my side and then when i express this right feeling to the other it brings about mutual happiness and that is justice in relationships justice in behavior <coughs> then yesterday we were talking about science of work and science of participation so science of work we said we were talking about our work with the rest of nature so if we understand the inherent harmony that is there in nature and we decide to live according to it then we will facilitate a conducive environment for the activity of the other three orders in nature or at least not violate this their innateness their inheritance their activity 
So we spoke of the physical order where we will allow them to exist by ensuring the constitution. As in constitution of the earth, we spoke about that. <coughs> we also um, see, saw how in the bio order, we can ensure a conducive environment so that they grow because it is innate to every plant, every unit in the bio order to grow. And we can ensure its seed so that it will have the same outcome, the growth will have the same outcome generation after generation. In the animal order, we talked about facilitating, now here there are two parts, two units. So facilitating the body, which is similar to the bio order. So ensuring an environment which is conducive for growth of the body. And when it comes to the self, the consciousness unit of the animal, Ensuring its will to live and ensuring its breed. In, when it comes to the human order, to how do we participate with the other human order? I mean, with other human beings. So when it comes to the body, it is similar to the bio order. So you ensure the physical facility, you sure ensure a conducive environment for the existence and growth of the body. And when it comes to the self, now the self of the human being has a will to live with continuous happiness. Not just will to live, but to live with continuous happiness. So for that, what is required is human education and sanskar. Because until and unless we have human education leading to right understanding, we may be going by many assumptions, which may or may not be right. And when we lack the understanding, we also lack understanding of the relationship. So with so many assumptions, when we try to go about things, we end up neither being happy ourselves nor being able to help the other be happy. So this will to live with continuous happiness in the self, that doesn't take place. The will is there, but we are unable to live with this continuous happiness. So therefore, mm -hmm. understanding of course is essential. And for that, this is, you know, the whole morning sessions, we are devoting to that, to the exercises, to exercise one and two, trying to explore within. And we have been able to see many changes but it is a slow process, it takes time. So with patience, with perseverance, we can continue to do that so that we are able to participate with other human beings also. In fact, with all the other orders in nature. So then we spoke of you know, how when we have this understanding or when we have human consciousness, we have the feeling of perseverance. That is the commitment for living in harmony with patience. This is what we were just saying. We have bravery which is 
referring to the commitment for helping others to understand the harmony and live in harmony at all the levels. And we also have generosity, which is our commitment to invest ourselves, the body, and the physical facility we have for understanding and living in harmony at all four levels. We invest the, all of this in, of course, trying to live in harmony with the, you know, individually plus helping others to do that. Also, we have the feeling of kindness. We can go forward in this slide. We can have the feeling of kindness where, next slide, where we are um, providing the means to somebody who has the ability, the competence, but doesn't have the means. Or uh, for somebody who um, has the means but doesn't quite know how to use them, we have the feeling of beneficence for them. We help them to develop their competence. And we have the feeling of compassion for those who have neither the means nor the ability. We try to help them build their competence as well as help them with their means. So we also gave a brief assignment yesterday for you to um, you know, reflect on as yesterday's assignment. And that was that in this science of participation, what do you see as your role at different levels, starting from the family order to the nation, to the world family order. So nation, world family, those will come later. But we start working on ourselves as the individual, seeing if we can be in harmony at more and more and more times as compared to earlier. And then we work with the family. So at least in our family order, are we seeing our role at this level? And then are we expanding this little by little so that we can see this role, say, with our neighbors, with our immediate friends, with our relatives, in our neighborhood, in our community, and so on. So if anybody would like to give their reflections or talk about this, or if there is a question. Namaskar, madam. Namaskar to all. Namaskar. Madam, in uh, the flow of uh, uh, self-reflection, uh, in addition to uh, the physical order, bio order, and animal order, in the sense, uh, uh, my participation uh, in the physical order, I am ensuring conducive environment and the chronic order um, ensuring uh, the means for the conducive environment for the plants also. Uh, I mean to say, uh, I don't want to cut any uh, tree or any small plant also. So I'm but, not violating it. Yeah, see. I'm not violating and uh, that's my a small participation and in the animal order, uh, uh, yeah, I uh, gen generally I take uh, 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 vegetarian food and also uh, I, I don't bear also if uh, suppose because in my family others they take uh, non-vegetarian uh, when I go to the shop I, I can't see also sometimes I, uh, I tell my wife also my mother I cannot bring uh, uh, the chicken or uh, the mutton for you I cannot see that and I handed over to some other also, but they did not uh, bring. So I am only going. So that I, at least for my side, I am not taking. Uh, so I am ensuring uh, the animals to means water. 
their will to live i am not uh, uh, obstructing and in human order uh, yes i am trying my level best uh, uh, in my family just two yesterday's assignment if, uh, specifically uh, yeah i am trying to understand uh, all the members of my family my mother my wife my children yeah day by day it is increasing and i am enlightening them also in my level i mean to say uh, what's the goal of uh, life and all uh, it's not uh, uh, in in uh, consuming physical things and all and uh, they have experienced also little by little along with me in uh, in our level not at the very uh, self realization level uh, so i'm trying my level best uh, so thank you this is my small exploration <laughs> yeah, nice madam, madam in this regard i have one doubt also so mm -hmm. seeds uh, i want uh, the original seeds madam suppose uh, vegetables uh, when when i was uh, in my childhood uh, i mean to say uh, in my uh, school school level uh, i used to take very tasty food uh, the vegetables are were very tasty and uh, uh, they full of strength also now production is more but taste is less and energy is also less uh, many people are suffering from different diseases also so how can i get uh, the original vegetables madam uh just a small doubt actually i can inquire also but uh, with your knowledge uh, what are the sources from which we can get uh, good vegetables uh, from the original seed yeah i see original seed some of them are no longer available also mm -hmm. even within india if you see mm -hmm. there used to be so many varieties of rice okay okay now you see only a handful of varieties of rice yeah if yeah you look at the you know seed of wheat mm -hmm. the original uh, wheat that used to be available long back that seed is now almost you know it is very hard to find so at least you know whatever we can find that's good mm -hmm. um at least those we can start preserving yeah yeah so if we have a little bit of area say around the house or something mm -hmm. we can plant a few things of course it's not the same as having a big farm and growing everything mm -hmm. but we can start seeing you know we will be able to appreciate how much work goes into getting um something to grow na no? yeah yeah even though we may provide what we call a conducive environment but the outcome is not up to us na no? yeah yeah sometimes it rains the the fruit will get spoiled yeah that See, is one of the reasons madam yeah yeah say you're growing something simple like spinach you mm -hmm. can even grow it in a pot yeah yeah isn't it now even for those kind of things if the you know soil is not um big mm. fertile soil or yeah, yeah. supposing it rains whatever is growing that can get damaged the crop can get damaged so many things can happen Mm -hmm. but if we do this and at least if we grow things that are that don't require so much babysitting so much care like for instance trees mm -hmm. so if you if you are able to plant fruit trees mm -hmm. even if we don't have area within our uh, you know if we don't have place within our own yard or something we can you know grow these outside the house so mm. we have um you know like some areas you will find the streets are lined with big tall trees very shady big tall trees but now with development we are cutting down so many of these areas so that we can build our houses but how much we need we have not identified so from our side what our participation can be 
uh, we can see in this. So far as you know, the original seeds are concerned, you would have to look into it, investigate into it. Yeah, yeah. Market yards, if we go, and uh, I think they may where there the are seeds are sold. The, yeah, mm. I mean, to see whether they are really the original seed or not. Mm -hmm. Maybe more in the some of the remote villages and all where this much of change may not have taken place. But things are rapidly changing, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Madam. So, like, uh, I can tell you for simple thing, no? Like, um, maybe cucumber. Mm -hmm. You notice the cucumber that used to come maybe 20 years back. Mm -hmm. um, that kind of cucumber you don't get now. You don't see in the market anywhere. Mm -hmm. No, you see what they call European cucumber or you see what they call hybrid cucumber. But you won't see the original. The taste was also very different, like you no, mentioned. Different, madam. So for so many of the vegetables, and one is changing the seed, the other is using so many chemicals. Oh, yeah. Fertilizer, pesticide, all that. So you'll find that the skin of the fruit becomes very hardened mm -hmm. and uh, you know of course the taste will also change no juice uh, it's not juicy it's uh, fleshy <laughs> and uh, yeah, madam one more doubt actually uh, in the process of green revolution uh, did not the scientists think all uh, the undesirable consequences at the time of uh, testing because uh, they uh, did not the test for uh, 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 means what? Only did they test for nutritional value or uh, uh, the other value? However, the guna quality is not uh, cannot be identified by the uh, instrument. That is okay. Uh, uh, the scientists cannot find. However, nutritional value also is different. Nah? But uh, even that, uh, why did not they identify, madam? See, it's not that they also want to do the right thing. Yeah, really, no. Nah. The Actually, their intention is good, no? Nah. Yeah. When because of less production. When we are using new technology, when we are trying to do something which we think is beneficial for the farmers. Yeah, really, madam. We don't have the whole picture. Yeah. So, when we don't have the whole picture, we don't realize that the changes that we are making, some hmm. things may benefit, but there may be some things which are not so beneficial. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really, madam. So, um, one is, you know, hybridization of the seeds. You may be able to get, if you look at the size of this fruit and see. Production also, productivity. Productivity, if you look at the size, the color, maybe it is more appealing. Mm, yeah, really, madam. And uh, withstanding uh, for uh, the diseases. Ah. No, I mean, ha, huh, matlab, uh, the plants may not get fall prey easily to insects and so on. Yeah, really. So if you are seeing from that production point of view, then it seems like it's a good idea. Ah, uh, it seems. To begin with, no. But the but, purpose is not being survived. Ah, uh, that is also there, no. So what that we how much we are able to see, and even if the scientists start with it. Mm. Ultimately, we have to see what is useful for the human being, what is useful for the rest of the nature and what is not. And until and unless we have the whole picture, sometimes we make mistakes. Like yesterday, we were talking about growing, you know, single crops. Mm, maybe in Hindi session, maybe you might have discussed. No, not no. in English. English. No. Uh... Single cropping like corn, for instance. Mm -hmm. Places are growing just single crops. Yeah, now yeah. you see that there are many plants which are nitrogen depleters. They yeah, really, madam. Yeah, the yeah, nitrogen yeah, yeah. In the soil. Then there are other plants which are nitrogen dal. Uh, uh, dal we have to keep. No, just let me finish. Yes. There are some plants which are nitrogen depleters, which deplete the nitrogen from the soil. Mm -hmm. 
there are other plants which can be nitrogen fixators they help to retain the nitrogen in the soil now if you grow these together then you will not have depletion from the soil yes the madam nitrogen. so there are lot of there is a science to this also no yeah yeah that uh, uh, that is there yes madam so there are many scientists have been talking about it that we need to have multi cropping we need to have original seeds the thought of profit maximization this assumption that more profit more um, availability of the goods all of that can be leading to or um, you know this um this kind of work with nature that we are ignoring many things which are of great consequence for the human being for the health of the body itself really madam so ultimately you can see that what is required is the entire view the whole view yeah yeah right understanding what we are talking about ultimately if we have that and we are able to see beyond what we are assuming to be the case if we can see you know in the essence what is there then we can make better choices mm really madam okay really in the case of uh, industrialization also industrial revolution the same thing happened many greenhouse gases undesirable uh, emissions are being uh, emitted in the environment uh, one way material development is there the other way the environment is being uh, polluted and uh, depletion of ozone layer and all those things given by god are being uh, what can i say uh, depleted uh, so this these are the consequences yeah ultimately a balance is required mm. see technology is important yeah yeah industry is important yeah but at what consequence that we should be able to see and if we can have a balance between that and what is significant for us also as human beings mm -hmm. we can see that and have a balance then it can work very well no? yeah yeah madam keeping in view of this uh, for many years i have been doing projects related to green energy also madam i used to do with the students uh, why do we you depend on these fossil fuel uh, sources uh, like coal and all these things because uh, if you burn it and uh, if if it undergoes combustion it will release uh, carbon dioxide carbon monoxide many undesirable emissions as well as uh, greenhouse gases so why let us depend on green energy given by god solar wind uh, ocean and all this uh, i concentrated on it uh, and i did some projects also i have been doing also madam now also yeah, my now research is also increasing awareness now there is increasing awareness mm, and yeah, yeah. many people are working on such things yeah yeah madam so Or... this is why you know as we become more aware as we start seeing the role of you know this what we call science today mm, madam um we'll be able to see that sustainability is an important thing and now more and more people are becoming aware of sustainability in terms mm -hmm. of housing in terms of uh, plants the soil and so on really madam uh, government is also making compulsory subjects in nep yeah, like we'll, uh, like uhv yeah, let me brief because yeah i am sorry thank you yeah <laughs> thank you thank you okay um i think we'll go forward so yesterday we said we'll look at um how when we talk of the participation the dimensions in the human order we spoke briefly about it education education and sanskar sanskar is when you bring it in your living health justice production service exchange distribution and we'll speak briefly about right utilization preservation and other services which can be which we can think of 
participation in. So if you look at, you can go to the next slide. If you look at the dimension of education and health. Now, for the human order, we've been able to see that education plays a very important role. Education means not just um, information about the material nature of the world, but what we are referring to as right understanding, having the complete picture, being able to see the reality the way it is. That we are trying to bring forward in education so that every child has the opportunity to avail of this to be able to see this for themselves so that not only they can have right understanding, but also right feeling and right thought. And ultimately that will lead to right behavior in every person. So we'll be able to see our role, our participation in our behavior with other human beings. And also when we are working with nature, we'll be able to take care of mutual fulfillment prosperity for us, as well as prosperity and enrichment of the nature. So this is the dimension of education. We can see many of the volunteers who are working. You can see that this is the dimension that we are working in, no? in education, so that we can um, help to make this available to more and more individuals. In the dimension of health, if we see, you know, we may have made many advances in what we call today medicine. We don't call it health, we call it medicine. Uh, we have been able to increase the longevity of life. But are we living healthier lives? That is important to see. So when we talk of health, when we work on health of the body, if the, if the body is in harmony, then there is no disease. Today, if we see, we focus on the disease. For this disease, take this medicine. For diabetes, take this. For high blood pressure, take that. And we are managing the disease for life because we don't seem to have any cure. But if you look at our traditional systems, which were more holistic, Ayurveda, for instance, there are many ways in which you can maintain the health and all these other things will vanish. So rather than focus on the disease and see what you can do to try to um, you know, correct it at a small level, at a limited level. If we can see the whole picture, if we can see the body as a whole and see the interconnectedness of the body with nature, then we'll also be able to see that it's not just the food that you eat. It is the kind of thoughts that you keep, the kind of feelings that you keep in the self which also impact the body. You'll also be able to see that this so-called, what we call stress, need not be a part of life. Because stress is not outside. Stress is within. Stress is my reaction to what is happening outside. If I can see that I can respond to situations outside, I need not have that stress. Now I am not creating disharmony in the body. You see, so we are working on health. So on the one hand, when we are providing this through education, when we are working on guidance in the self, so the self can remain healthy, self can be in harmony, self can be stress-free. It also has an impact on the body the health of the body. So we need to ensure both in the dimension of health. Health of the self as well as health of the body. 
and we will see to have a holistic picture we can also see that the environment also plays a role so if we have polluted air you know we have more instances of asthma and so many things if the water is polluted there can be problems with digestion gastroenteritis and so many other issues so like that we have we can also see that the health of the environment is also a must for maintaining the health of the human being so this dimension of health we can work on in a holistic manner then we can see a different picture then rather than focusing on the hundreds and thousands of diseases we'll be able to see that if we just do the right things in tune with in sync with the nature with the natural rhythms natural cycles of day and night and so many other things are there that can be taken care of then you will find that the body already was in harmony and we don't violate that we try to continue with that so the body stays in harmony and therefore there is absence of disease next slide please then if we look at the dimension of justice if you look at this now when we are working on ourselves and we are working on the body as a human being you are a healthy human being you have a healthy self and you have a healthy body so you healthy self means you have happiness within harmony within so you are fulfilled now with this fulfillment we can interact when we interact with other human beings in our relationships we express this you know right feeling towards the other because with this understanding when we are healthy we have ensured the right feeling in us now when we express this to the other then there is justice in the relationship because nobody has a problem with the right feeling when we ensure the feeling from our side and we express this to the other then the other is also able to respond of course if we have made many mistakes the other may not respond immediately because they are going by our past behavior it may take some time but the very first thing that will happen is when i ensure my feeling i will feel happy so that solves my problem of unhappiness to begin with and then when i you know with this ensured feeling from my side when i interact with the other now i can have compassion for the other now i can see that the other is also struggling the other is unhappy but i'll be able to see it only when i come out of my unhappiness if i am unhappy i keep thinking the other is to blame the other is also unhappy and thinks i am to blame then we are at loggerheads and we can't seem to find a solution therefore we break up the relationship but how many relationships will be break up where is the guarantee that tomorrow will be in a different relationship which is better ultimately i have to work on myself and with working on myself then i can see that the problem is actually not the other the problem is within me i am creating these thoughts i am creating this feeling and it is because of my wrong assumptions because i have not been able to see the whole picture because i am not referring to the natural acceptance so as we keep doing this we find that we are able to ensure justice in our relationships with other human beings and there can be mutual happiness this is real justice today what we are calling justice is actually trying to solve injustice isn't it 
I mean, in in our legal systems and so on, there is already so much injustice happening. We are trying to take a small, narrow, limited view of that and trying to solve it there. But we need again a bigger picture. So when we look at things holistically, when we look at the essence of what there is in reality, then we are able to see that I'm in fact already related to every other human being. I just need to be able to see it and live it. And when I do that and ensure the feeling from my side, I'm able to do this justice in my relationships. And there is mutual fulfillment in that. So when we ensure this justice, then there will be trust. No, the other has faith. The other has trust in me. The other is reassured. And there is fearlessness in the society. Because if we all see our relatedness with the other, there is no fear of the other. Then we can look at the dimension of production and service. So production is when we are working with nature. And in this process of working with nature, some physical facility is produced. This is what production is referred to, right? And with this physical facility, we can fulfill the needs of the body. So whatever work we do with the rest of nature, the outcome of that is the production of the physical facility. Then there are some activities which don't produce anything, but they may be concerned with protection, with maintenance. So an example given here is washing of clothes. Now nothing is being produced, but we are preserving or maintaining what we already have. So you'll find that there are many such things, such activities also that we do, which are not necessarily producing something, but would also be classified as labor. repair work, maintenance work of any kind, it's not directly associated with producing something new. But already what exists to be able to protect that, to be able to maintain that, because that's, that is also required. Only when things are protected, things are maintained, can we rightly utilize them. So this, these kind of activities can be termed as service. Next slide. If you look at the exchange, the dimension of exchange. Now, we are not producing every time, every item that we are using. In fact, today, if we see you know, earlier with agricultural areas, you know, and the majority of the work being at the level of doing agriculture, a lot of the production was being taken care of by many, you know, individual farmers. And most people were in some way connected. But as we have migrated to the cities and our environments have become a little more distant from this, we can see that many of us are not really working with nature to produce any item today. Nor can we you know, do every kind of service that we need. So we may have to take the help of others. And when we take the help of others for the service that we are taking from them, we have some exchange. So as per the needs, we can exchange. So today, I mean, when we were talking the other day about 
whatever we get. So the milk that we get, we are not directly working with the cows. We are not taking care of the cow, but we are getting this. But somebody is working for it. So as a means of exchange, we provide them something in today's you know, way of exchange, it is money. And then we get the service and so on. If we look at right utilization, this is very significant because whatever we already have, if we are not aware about rightly utilizing it, it seems that our need is much bigger than what it actually is. So that must that is an important part that we have to keep track of is right utilization. So we asked that question earlier also. Are we rightly utilizing the things that we already have? So in our houses, there may be many things that we have kept. We can start looking at them and seeing, are we rightly utilizing them? If we are not utilizing them, then perhaps we can share them with somebody who can utilize them. And if things are, you know, just rotting or decaying, we can preserve them. We can make sure that we um, sort of say like the other day we said, furniture. If furniture is not taken care of, there is moisture, there will be termites coming into it and eating up the furniture. So we can you know, ensure, say, you know, polishing, varnishing, those kind of things. And there also you will find much of the physical facility that we have in our homes. While we are using, it stays in a fairly good condition. But once it is dumped to some part of the house and we forget about it, now very quickly it deteriorates. So like we were saying yesterday, you know, use it or lose it. That is true for many things. So utilizing things rightly, things that we have already obtained through production or exchange. So that is a significant, that is something significant we have to take care of. Then if we look at preservation, the natural resources that we have, we are using them for production, for exchange. Now these natural resources are limited. We should be able to see this. So until and unless we preserve them, they're not just there in an infinite manner. There is, there is some limit to these natural resources. There is abundance, that is true. And that is sufficient for all. But if we don't see that, you know, that they are not unlimited, that they are not infinite, we'll be able to also see that we need to enrich and protect what we already have and use it wisely for the uh, production and exchange. So this is preservation or security. So these are many dimensions that we can see the significance. Next slide. Then we look at the dimension of, another dimension of service, administrative and social. Administrative service, we call that system where, or that order, or an orderly system, where things seem to run smoothly. So to make sure that whatever we, you know, whatever we understand and the systems we try to bring in place, that they all work smoothly, 
they work you know in order in a in an organized manner for that we need some systems to bring about this proper working of all of them that we refer to as administrative service now social service when we say we are you know whatever there are loopholes despite the administrative services despite taking care of so many of the issues that we may be able to see sometimes there will be some shortcomings now being able to see and take care of them through our relationships that is called social service being able to see our relatedness with others and doing it with that feeling of relatedness so helping with that feeling of relatedness so that would be called social service so what is ensured by the system that is being referred to as administrative service what is being done through the feeling of relationship in society between human beings that is referred to as social service and both are important so as an example you can say that the volunteers who are working with uhv now seeing the relatedness we are doing it as a social service for helping others to also understand the aict is providing the administrative service the system for it so 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 that you know for instance for instance the zoom license and so many things so the two have to go hand in hand for um, being able to um, have this ensured did in our state i am i am from karnataka state Mm-hmm. Newly government has changed. There are every alternative they are telling that we remove any plan to restate SCP. Your voice state. is not so clear. I am not able to make out what you are saying. Did you now I am clear? Ha, ah, now it's better. Yeah, I am from Karnataka. Mm-hmm. Did you every alternative they are are daily they are telling that we remove any P because the state government now changed. from the bjp bjp government to congress uh, they are telling every day we remove nep whether uhv will be under the nep only now madam see um uhv can be done um as a you know every um uh what you say every university every educational institution can bring this by choice now in if you look at the icp this is a strong recommendation from the icit the icit is working the, the engineering colleges which are in, enrolled in this under icit yes yes uh, there there you can see it is a strong recommendation But, oh. um, we can start doing this like when we are talking about uhv making nodal cells the nodal centers all of that that can be done um, if we start even with the individual level at the individual level so if we can get our um our university officials higher officials to take a look at the content of the uhv because until and unless somebody goes to the content when you say human values they may not get the full picture of what this profound message is so if we can get them to see this one go through this once then uh, many times they become the driving force for ensuring it in their colleges so that is something that one can try to see our participation in Oh, then the ACT will not impose a mandatory. Mandatorily, we should uh, put this uh, that this. They can just uh, both of both. Uh, 
सिर्फ एडमिनिस्ट्रेटिव एज वेल एज सोशल Yeah. yeah, yeah. Because uh, we are talking uh, cross talks in our colleges also. They which will go now we are we included in our curriculum, curriculum first year level, second year level. Yeah. So no, due, due both will be required. The, both administrative mm. and social. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Okay, uh, just a couple of more minutes, and we are almost through with this lecture also. So we'll. go to the next so attainment of the human objectives so for fulfillment of our goals and objectives we need these dimensions all these that we spoke of just now education health justice production service exchange right utilization security services and in the services administrative and social education and health will take care of our physical and mental well being justice will take care of our relationships production and service exchange right utilization preservation this will ensure our requirement of physical facility is taken care of at the same time we are enriching nature also and for all these functions all these dimensions to work together in a smooth manner then you have the dimension of service at the level of the system so you can have the administrative service which is provided by the system and then you have the society um service which is being provided through relationship or social service next slide yeah so i don't want to spend too much time on this evaluating the present state of science we can see that you know we are not really working on all these areas that we spoke of the various dimensions so if we look at all of these in present day science then science of behavior there is some scattered effort science of participation in the larger order um you know it is very limited because we are not able to see this the harmony in the essence so we have to broaden the scope and we have to bring in the consciousness we have to bring in the space these are realities that exist that we are not talking about in science so we need to bring them bring in this what we call you know what is the naturally acceptable feeling because that is how in essence things are so bring in this relationship the harmony that coexistence that is already existing yeah that is already there as a reality in existence then when we see that then we can live according to it but if we don't see it at all then it is not there in the picture so now it looks like everything is material and everybody is isolated so because of those assumptions our behavior our work our participation we can see where it's lagging so ultimately we need all of this we need a holistic look at it for that again it comes to working for right understanding yes i think that is the completion of this uh, lecture yeah so um we'll reflect on this if there is uh, any question we'll take it tomorrow because time is already up uh, but we can reflect on it and put forward our questions and queries or comments on this tomorrow i'll put an assignment in the group also uh,